I expected that uh, that this will happen. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Powell, for taking the questions. This is Nick Rosterzinski from Barron's Magazine. Um, it seems that over the past three or four years, economies and central banks in developed markets at least have been on more or less the same trajectory, easing during the pandemic, fighting inflation with restrictive policy on the way out. Um, feels like that may be ending in 2024 based on some of the economic data from Europe and the US and Japan and statements from those central banks as well. So my question is, what, what considerations or risks does a period of more divergent global economic trajectories and central bank policies present for the FOMC? So um, that you're right. I think that that may happen. And I, you know, you know that we all serve domestic mandates, right? So I think the difference between the United States and and other countries that are now considering uh, rate cuts is that they're just not having the kind of growth we're having. Uh, they they have their inflation is performing about like ours or maybe a little better, but they, they're not experiencing the kind of growth we're experiencing. So. We actually have the luxury of having strong growth in a strong labor market, very low unemployment, high job creation, and all of that. And we can be patient, and we and we will will be careful and cautious as we approach the decision to cut rates. Whereas I think other other jurisdictions may go before that. In terms of the implications, I, you know, I think um, obviously markets see it coming. It's priced in now, and so I, th I think the economy markets and economies can adapt to it. Uh, and I think, you know, we haven't seen, in, in addition for the emerging market economies, we haven't seen the kind of turmoil that was more frequent 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And that's, I think, partly because emerging market countries, many of them have much better monetary policy frameworks, much more credibility on inflation. And so they're navigating this pretty well this time. Thank you, Chair Powell. Jennifer Schoenberger with Yahoo Finance. You sort of backed away from the notion that the economy would need to encounter pain before inflation to come back down. But given the sticky inflation data in the first quarter, can disinflation still happen along a relatively painless path for the economy? Or is some softening in the labor market and the economy likely needed to bring inflation back down? So you're right. We, I think we thought, in, and uh, most people thought there would have to be uh, probably significant um, dislocations somewhere in the economy, perhaps the labor markets, to get inflation all the way down from the very high levels it was at at the beginning of this episode. That didn't happen. That's a tremendous result. We're very, of course, gratified and pleased that that hadn't happened. And if you look at the dynamics that enabled that, it really was that this the, that that. So much of the gain was from the unwinding of, the, of things that weren't to do with monetary policy, but the unwinding of the distortions to the economy, you know, supply problems, supply side problems, and also from some demand issues as well. The unwinding of those really helped inflation come down. <clears throat> now, as I've said, I, I'm not giving up on that. So I think I think it is possible that 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 those forces will still work to help us bring inflation down. We can't we can't be guaranteed that that's true though, and so you know we're 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 trying to use our tools in a way that keeps the the labor market strong and the, and the economy strong, but also helps bring inflation back down to two percent sustainably. We will bring inflation down to two percent sustainably. We hope we can do it without, um, you know, without uh, what really is I think occupying us at this at this time in terms of what's what's what we're moving ahead with. Thank you, Mark Hamrick with uh, Bankrate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, what can you tell us about your, the approach that you take uh, with your role in the Senate?